Welcome to the fourth video in a series of tutorials on EPA Method 334.0, Expectations for Public Water Systems in Pennsylvania. In this video, we will cover the initial demonstration of capability, or IDC, for the GRAB method, including the requirements for primary standard analysis and statistical analysis, as well as documentation using the DEP form. The IDC is a required component of Method 334.0. It is a protocol used to assess the capability of an analyst as it relates to his or her accuracy and precision using a specific GRAB sample method. The IDC must be completed by each analyst. The analyst must successfully complete the IDC prior to conducting chlorine residual analysis for compliance determinations. The IDC needs to be completed once for each method being utilized by an analyst for the collection of regulatory data or comparative GRAB sampling. One method may have multiple analysis ranges. For example, Hawk has three ranges for standard methods 4500 CLG. Completing the IDC on one analysis range is sufficient. The IDC procedure involves the analysis of five reference samples of a single concentration of primary standard. Each replicate should be analyzed as a discrete sample, following each and every step of the protocol. When the five replicates have been analyzed, the analyst's accuracy is assessed by calculating the average result for comparison to the expected value. The average result must be within plus or minus 15% of the reference sample concentration. Precision is assessed by calculating the relative standard deviation of the five replicates. The relative standard deviation must be less than or equal to 15%. DEP's record-keeping form for the GRAB method IDC contains tables and formulas to walk you through all of the calculations to complete the demonstration of accuracy and precision. To complete an IDC for the GRAB method, the analyst begins by analyzing a method blank to determine interference from the DPD reagent. We will discuss more about the method blank in a minute. The analyst then analyzes five replicates of a diluted primary check standard at one concentration and records the results. Finally, the analyst completes the calculations to determine their accuracy and precision as an analyst. I'll be referencing the IDC form as we go over the procedure. Remember this and all of DEP's Method 334.0 forms can be found on eLibrary. A job aid for the IDC process, which includes the steps reviewed in this video, is available at this link, which can be found in the video description below. Here is what the IDC record keeping form looks like. You should begin by completing Part 1, General Information, at the top. Record your PWS ID, system name, the date, the analyst name, analysis method, and the analyzer manufacturer, model, and serial number. Part 2, Independent Reference Sample Analysis, is where you will record the results of the method blank and your five replicates of primary standard. We will review this process next. The first step is to determine the method blank value for the lot of reagent you are using in order to assess the level of interference caused by the DPD. The procedure for determining a method blank involves following the procedure for the chosen method with the exception of the sample matrix. In other words, rather than using water that may or may not contain chlorine, use reagent grade water that does not contain chlorine. Remember to zero before adding DPD reagent. Even though you are using blank water, it must be treated just like a sample. Then add reagent, mix according to the published procedure, and read the result. Because we know there is no chlorine present in the reagent water, any measured concentration that is detected will be attributable to the presence of DPD. This value will be subtracted from our measured concentrations in order to produce a corrected concentration that is a more accurate assessment of the concentration of chlorine. The interference caused by the DPD can vary from lot to lot. 
it is recommended that each new lot of reagent be analyzed for a method blank to determine the impact on measured chlorine concentration. The method blank concentration must be less than or equal to one-third of the concentration of the lowest standard used to initially verify the calibration curve. The initial verification procedure is discussed in detail in a separate video, but for the purposes of discussing the method blank, method 334.0 requires that the lowest concentration calibration standard must be at or below 0.2 mg per liter or the minimum chlorine residual required by the state. So if the lowest concentration standard is 0.20 mg per liter, the method blank must be less than 0.067 mg per liter. Referring back to the IDC form, the method blank result is recorded here. The second step of the IDC is to analyze five replicates of a primary standard. Before you can analyze your primary standard, you have to determine what concentration you want to prepare. Then you need to plan your dilution, gather the necessary equipment, and prepare your diluted standard. Remember, you need to prepare enough diluted standards so that you can analyze five replicates, plus a little extra for rinsing the sample cell in between. The calculation to determine your dilution was covered in the video on standards. Please refer to that video if you are not sure how to dilute your primary standard. Once you have prepared your standard, you can analyze five replicates as discrete samples and record your results. Looking back at the IDC form, the aqueous check standard concentration is recorded in this field called independent reference sample concentration. This is the concentration of the prepared or diluted primary standard. Once you have prepared your diluted primary standard, you will analyze five replicates of the prepared standard and record each result in the corresponding field under the measured concentration column. It is critical that each replicate is run as a discrete sample with each step repeated for each sample from beginning to end. Here are a few tips to help you eliminate sources of error. Make sure all reagents are from the same lot so they are all designed for the same sample size and have the same degree of interference. Use a two-step rinsing process between analyses. Start by thoroughly rinsing your sample cell with distilled water to remove all traces of residual reagent. Then rinse it again with a small volume of prepared standard to displace the remaining distilled water. This will eliminate any unwanted dilution of the standard being analyzed. Measure your meniscus carefully to make sure that the volume of sample you are analyzing is appropriate and consistent for each individual analysis. Make sure you are consistent with how you analyze each sample. Be sure to zero in between each sample. The final step is to assess your data for accuracy and precision. This is accomplished through a series of calculations. The record keeping form walks you through all of the calculations. Let's take a look. In the first table, you calculate the corrected concentration by subtracting the method blank value. Next, determine the average of corrected concentrations by adding each of the corrected concentration values and dividing by five. The last step on page one of the IDC form is the calculation for the initial demonstration of accuracy. For this step, we will determine the percent difference for the average of corrected concentrations of the five replicates. Here is the percent difference calculation. Again, the form walks you through this, so let's take a closer look. Transfer the values for average of corrected concentrations and reference sample concentration into their respective fields. C is the average of corrected concentrations and A is the reference sample concentration. Subtract the reference sample concentration, A, from the average of corrected concentrations, C. Divide this result by the reference sample concentration, A, and record the value. Multiply this result by 100 to determine the percent difference. Check the appropriate box for whether the percent difference is within plus or minus 15%. If the percent difference is within plus or minus 15%, the initial demonstration of accuracy has been passed for this analyst using the specific method. He or she can move on to the initial demonstration of precision. 
If the percent difference is not within plus or minus 15%, the analyst's procedure, reagents, and equipment should be evaluated so the source of error can be determined and addressed. Once any issues have been identified and corrected, the IDC should be repeated. The next step is to evaluate the precision of the analyst. You do this by determining the standard deviation and relative standard deviation of the five replicates. Here are the formulas for standard deviation and relative standard deviation. Let's look at the back page of the form. Begin by determining standard deviation. Transfer the five individual corrected concentration values to their respective fields. The corrected concentration values should match the values calculated for each individual sample on the first page. Transfer the average of corrected concentrations value. This will be the same for each of the five rows. Subtract the value for the average of corrected concentrations from each of the individual corrected concentration values. Determine the square of each value obtained for the difference between corrected and average of corrected concentrations by multiplying it by itself. Then calculate the average of these squared values by dividing their sum by 5. Determine the standard deviation of the five replicates by taking the square root of this average value. Transfer the values for standard deviation, S, that was just calculated, and average of corrected concentrations, C, to the respective fields. Divide the standard deviation value by the average of corrected concentrations, then multiply the result by 100 to determine the relative standard deviation of the five replicates. If the relative standard deviation is less than or equal to 15%, the initial demonstration of precision for this analyst has been passed for this specific method. If the relative standard deviation is greater than 15%, the analyst's procedure should be evaluated so the source of error can be determined and addressed. Once any issues have been identified and corrected, the analyst should repeat the IDC procedure. If the analyst is not able to successfully complete the IDC, he or she should not conduct compliance measurements for chlorine residual. If the analyst passes both the initial demonstrations of accuracy and precision, he or she has successfully completed the initial demonstration of capability and can use the specific grab sample method to collect data for regulatory purposes or comparative grab sampling. Be sure to maintain a copy of your IDC form. The only way to document that it was completed is to be able to produce a copy of this completed form. You may want to create a binder to contain all of your important Method 334.0 documents. Let's review the key points from this video. The Initial Demonstration of Capability, or IDC, is a required component of Method 334.0. It evaluates the accuracy and precision of each analyst and must be successfully completed prior to conducting compliance measurements. The IDC uses five replicates of a primary standard at a single concentration, followed by a statistical analysis of the results. For documentation, you can use the DEP record-keeping form for the analyst IDC. This form, as well as the other Method 334.0 forms, can be found on DEP's eLibrary. In the next video in this series, we will review the initial calibration verification for the GRAB method required by Method 334.0.